In this video, we're going to discuss the chain rule in action. We're going to look at an example and talk about how we can exploit Leibniz notation or we can make explicit compositions to study the chain rule. And they're both going to lead us to the same place. And we're going to talk about why one method might be preferable to another. So let's just look at a concrete problem. Suppose a balloon is inflated so that the radius in centimeters is given as a function of time in seconds by the formula r equals 1 plus 1 third t. Now our goal is to find the rate at which the volume of the balloon changes with respect to time when r equals 2 and then a second problem when t equals 6. So we have these two different moments when we're supposed to find the rate of change of the volume of the balloon with respect to time. So we have time t, and we have the volume v. And since we're looking for the rate of change, we need to analyze dv dt, the rate uh, at which v changes as a function of t. So our first solution is going to be using Leibniz notation. So let's collect together what we know. We know that the volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed, where r is the radius. And we're also told in this problem that r is a function of time explicitly, 1 plus 1 third t. So r is a function of t, and then v is a function of r. So we have a composition. And that means that if we're going to find the derivative dv dt, the chain rule is a good bet. Now, in Leibniz notation, the chain rule looks like this dv dt equals dv dr times dr dt. And remember, a nice mnemonic fact is that the drs appear to cancel, although that's not really what happens. But if it helps you remember it, great. So here's our chain rule. And to apply the chain rule, we need to know the time and the radius at a particular moment in order to plug those arguments into the appropriate formula. So that's really the name of the game here. So if v is 4 thirds pi r cubed, then dv dr is 4 pi r squared. And if r is 1 plus 1 third t, then dr dt is 1 third. So let's answer problem a. When r equals 2, well, we know that dr dt is actually 1 third. It's a constant, so we'll just substitute that information in. And now when r equals 2, we'll notice that dv dr is going to equal 16 pi. So we'll substitute that in. And here we have our answer. dv dt is 16 pi over 3, which is approximately 16.755 cubic centimeters per second. So let's move on to problem B. We're supposed to find dv dt when t equals 6. Now once again, we know dr dt already is 1 third. And now here we have a little bit of a problem because uh, we want to find dv dt when t equals 6, but dv dr is set up to accept a radius, so we need to know the radius at this same moment. So we'll look to this formula when t equals 6, r is 3. And so that means we're looking for the moment when r equals 3, and now we can go back to our formula for dv dr, and we realize that when r is 3, dv dr is 36 pi. So we'll substitute that in, and now we find that dv dt is 12 pi, or about 37.699 cubic centimeters per second. So now we're going to go back to the beginning and solve these both using explicit composition. So what do I mean by that? So we know that v is a function of r, is 4 thirds pi r cubed. We know r is a function of t, is 1 plus 1 third t. What if we just substitute in this formula for r right into this formula for v. Well, we're going to have an explicit formula for volume as a function of time. And now we can just take the derivative. Now, there's a scalar multiple, so the scalar comes out. There's something cubed. The power rule says that should be 3 something squared. And then the chain rule says we have to take the derivative of what's inside with respect to t, so that's going to be 1 third. Now these threes cancel, and here's our explicit formula for v prime of t, 4 thirds pi, quantity 1 plus 1 third t squared. So we have our derivative explicitly as a function of t, and now 
we need to answer our questions. So the first question is find v prime of t when r equals 2. Once again, we have a bit of a mismatch. So we need to use this equation to figure out the correct value of t. We're going to set 1 plus 1 third t equal to 2. We're going to find out that t equals 3. Now we can evaluate v prime of 3. It's 16 pi over 3, just like we saw before. Problem B, find dvdt when t equals 6. Well, this one's easy. t is 6, so we're just going to plug this right in, and we're going to find out that v prime of 6 is about 12, is 12 pi, which is about 37.699 cubic centimeters per second. So let's compare the two methods. We started with these bits of information. A formula for volume as a function of the radius and a formula for the radius as a function of time. In the first method, we simply launched into calculating derivatives first, which using implicit differentiation is quite easy. Don't forget the chain rule. dv dt equals dv dr times dr dt. And then we were able to calculate dv dr given our formula, and we were able to calculate dr dt given our formula. Now you'll notice that the rate at which volume changes with respect to time is, in this case, expressed as a function of the radius. If you wanted it expressed as a function of time, you could use this bit of information, plug it in here to r, and create an explicit composition. And we'll just simplify this. And we see that dv dt is equal to 4 pi over 3 times the quantity 1 plus 1 third t squared. Now in the second method, we substituted this into the formula for v first to create an explicit composition. And then we took the derivative. Don't forget the chain rule. These factors of 3 cancel, and we get this expression these two expressions for dv dt match, and so we conclude that these two different routes lead to the same destination. So if you look at this diagram, you realize that you could first take the derivative with respect to t, and then you could create an explicit composition, or you could create a, an explicit composition first, and then take the derivative with respect to t. You should wind up going to the same place. But let's talk a little bit about why you might want to go one way over the other. Why would you want to go this way? Well, it's conceptually simple and compelling. You're creating, right off the bat, a function with one input variable and one output variable. This is, after all, one variable calculus, so this is probably the more conceptually simple way to go. Another good reason, perhaps you need an explicit formula in order, say, to plot a graph of v versus t. So why would you want to go this way? Well, one possibility is you might be given useful information about dv dr or dr dt right off the bat. And if you go this way, you can immediately use that information. Another possibility is that you might not have an explicit formula for r in terms of t. If you don't have access to such a formula, then this route is actually closed to you and you don't even have an option. So a useful thing to remember is that solving a math problem might seem like going from A to B, but it's never just one route that you want to think of. You got to know the lay of the land. It's possible that you might have many options, and one option is going to be preferable to another depending on the circumstances. So the general lesson here is to learn many skills, know your options, and analyze the specific circumstances of each problem so you can pick out the best route for you.